Okay. All right. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Dia Beltran. Um, today I'm doing an unusual live stream. Oops. Let me just pause the other side. Today I'm doing an unusual live stream because I don't usually do a live stream on a Thursday. They're every Wednesday night. But I couldn't help myself. It had to be done before the election. And Tim Dwyer is um, part of the the um, sorry. I'm just lost my words. The, <laughs> is Tim Dwyer is part of the Fraser and in Conservative Party faction of South Australia. He's been a very dear friend to me the last couple of days. Um, definitely a mentor for me. And we have him. We have him. So hello, Mr. Tim Dwyer. Hey, Dia. How are you doing? Hi, everybody. How are you? <laughs> so good to have you. I'm excited that you're here. You are one of the best human beings I've ever known in my life. I, I want everyone yeah. to know how highly I think of you. You're so kind. I appreciate that. <laughs> I really do. Well, very yeah. sweet. Well, um, let's just begin with um, why you decided to uh, become, uh, to join the Fraser Anning Conservative Party. Well, <sighs> It's very interesting, dear. One of the things that happened was that for the last 20-odd years, I've been studying the Australian Commonwealth Constitution. And mm. I see a lot of injustices and, and things that happen throughout the political arena. And I also went in and went to a lot of uh, federal politicians and state politicians' offices and ask them if they actually had an annotated version of the Constitution. Mm. And they've never seen it. They've never, ever seen it. Now, these are the people running our country. And so then what I did was I would have different people come to me with different issues and all sorts of things, and I'd try and help them. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not a lawyer, okay? I'm, I'm not practising law here. Mm. And, and what I say tonight is not to be taken as um, legal advice in any way, shape or form. But I would try and help these people with what knowledge I had. And we did have some successes. A friend of mine came to me and said, listen, he's been approached to run for the Senate here in South Australia for Fraser Anning's Conservative National Party. And he wanted me to be the number two on the ticket. So I said, well, I'd have to think about that. Not because it was Fraser Anning. But I would just have to think about it from the perspective of I'm already very busy. I am very busy. And to put this on. Oh, yeah, look. You're a grandpa, among other things. Yeah. I'm a, I'm a husband. I'm a grandfather. I'm yeah. a father. I run two different companies. I am busy, right? Gotcha. And so, and so I then thought, well, I've stood outside their political offices, I've spoken to politicians, I've yelled and screamed and knocked on doors, and nothing changes. And so I thought, well, I've now been given an opportunity to possibly, possibly step inside the house and make changes from within. Now, when you're given an opportunity to you do that, it. you take it. And Absolutely. And the other thing was I looked at Fraser Renning. I did a bit of research into Fraser, and what I found was that he was a guy who had good, solid Christian foundation, hard worker, entrepreneur, businessman that literally loves the fabric of this nation. And I thought I can stand alongside of that. So well, that's, that's really that's nice. And I've seen your profile photo. You, you've like me. You've met him and had a photo with him. <laughs> yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We've uh, we've shared a shandy or two, Fraser and I. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> so that's good. So, what compelled you was your love of country, your love of nation, and your uh, your analysis of of the uh, variables with the constitution and Australian history, generally speaking. Yeah, and it is my love of country. And it's my total disdain for injustice. Mm. You know, if it's if it's good on this hand, it's got to be good on that hand. Think about this. Um, the federal politicians, they go into parliament, they get elected in, they get paid very, very well. Mm. Um, and just... They're career you, politicians. You can be a very... I'm not. I'm not a career politician, no. No. Um, but they get paid very well. They get a huge oh, expense yes. account. And when they retire, no matter what age, they get a very large pension 
and yet our pensioners are means tested, i.e. how much money do they have in the bank mm. or they can actually get a pension. Now, that's not right. The, the, the people in parliament are there as servants to the people who elect them. And yes, yes, I understand that, yes. And But now it's turned that the parliamentarians, the politicians, are acting as overlords over the people. It's wrong. So, yeah, I'd pick me. I'm in the house. You know, I want to get in there with a big broom and start sweeping. Absolutely. Do you know what's really funny? I was talking to the Dusty Bogan yesterday on my channel and um, I was mentioning how many people say, Fraser running for PM, Fraser running for PM. Now, whether I don't know if people are saying it to be nice because they, genu they generally think he deserves to be PM, but I think some people don't realise that voting a smaller party doesn't make the leader of that party the Prime Minister. No. I, think, I think that most people are a little bit too um, apolitical and being yeah. apolitical means you don't really know how how the system runs in your own country. So do you want to sort of give people a little bit of, I so I already know that like electing um, a smaller party just means you're giving uh, power to a bigger party. But I also know that putting more smaller parties into power means that you can block shitty laws that come in. But yeah. um, do you want to give a bit of background knowledge to the people that think Senator Fraser Manning could possibly become oh, PM? At, at this point in time, Fraser Manning cannot ever be prime minister. No. <laughs> um, however, if his party <laughs> if his party got big enough one day, maybe he could. But anyway. Oh yes, yes. But what happens is this: the the smaller parties, um, their key is the Senate, because the two major parties. Now, this is going to get a little bit. Here we go. We're going to sort of duck and dive in and out of the Constitution a little bit here. This is why I mentioned it because I thought this would be a good segue into that subject yeah. matter. Okay. Yeah. Uh, the two-party preferred system, when that was established, blocked all other parties. Mm. Yeah. Okay, now, if you look at it this way, right, two wings of the same bird, okay? Yeah. Now, the two-party preferred system is a cartel. Mm -hmm. You can't get rid of them, be one or the other. Yeah. Now, what happens then, the only way to control those um, career ego-driven politicians is in the Senate. Now, Fraser Ranning is in the Senate. Uh, some of his people are running for the lower house, lower house seats. But yeah. most of the people uh, like myself and Peter Manuel, the person who's running number one on our ticket, we're running for the Senate because any bills that the government want to pass, regardless of whether it's Liberal or Labor, mm. they want the bill passed. It has to come through the Senate. Yes. Now, so there's upper Senate, house and lower house. Yeah. So upper house, lower house, right? Yes. Now, when it gets to the Senate, that's where the brakes can be put on. That's where we can go, no, sorry. We're not doing that. This is not getting through. Now, one person can't do it. You need a number of people either from the same party or a coalition of minor party senators to form together. Mm. Now, it's very interesting when you uh, look through the Senate, there is a number of Christian-based senators that if we were to put three or four more in there, um, the Christians would control the parliament. Yes. And that's that's part of my game. That's that's why I decided to do this. Well done. I'm, I'm rooting for you. Just before yeah. you continue, people are letting me know in the chat that Bob Hawke died today. I wasn't aware. Oh. Well. That's sad. Poor guy. Well, death comes to us all. Sorry for Bob Hawke's family. And, yeah, um, hopefully yeah. he's he's home with the Lord. I don't know where he where he was with that. Yeah, me neither. But um, anyway, so that that wipes out a little bit of what I was going to talk about tonight because I will not speak ill of the dead. So no, um, well let's 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 talk. Let, let's delve into the Constitution yeah, because we the, are here to have an intellectual discussion. Despite right. people's lack of belief in me, I'm sure we can do it. <laughs> here we go. Okay, the people. Constitution. This is the annotated version of the Constitution of the Commonwealth of Australia. Now, annotated means 
it has the full explanation of every aspect of the constitution how it came about what every nearly what every word in the actual act itself the constitution act means mm. and the definitions thereof now what we have to understand is today there would be a lot of people out there who would tell us or try and tell us that Australia is not a Christian nation. Oh, I hear it all the time, and the Greens are trying to get rid of the preamble. Yeah. Oh, no, the well, Lord's Prayer. Sorry, the, the Lord's, Lord's Prayer. Prayer out of Parliament, yes. Yeah, that's all so right. insulting. Yeah. That's our heritage. Don't touch it. Well, let me let me help you a little bit. Now, the other side of this is yeah. this, this book, it's yeah. no longer part of the curriculum of the education department but it was it was it was once upon a time when we yeah. were in school and um if you that's, go to that's that's by by design because they want us to be stupid and not know once you don't know what rights and power you have it's very easy to take them from you mm. now you can go to a national library you can go to your city library and ask for this book, not the little thin booklet they give you that's called the Constitution, because that has actually been altered in modern times. Mm. This particular book, they you have to make an appointment to go and see it, and if you're reading it, there is a camera in the wall watching who's reading it, and there's a camera in the roof watching what you're reading. That's how powerful this book is. They want to know what you want to know. But let me read a little bit out of the preamble of the Constitution to help people understand how much power they actually have in this country if only they would know how to exercise it. Mm. Now, on page 286 of the preamble of the Constitution... All right, let me turn with you. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Now, they're talking about where does the power lie in this country because in they speak here in Britain... Uh, it lies within the parliament, right? Yeah. And they, they mention about the American Constitution. And now these opinions approach near the truth, mm -hmm. does not reach it. For the truth is, now listen to these words, please. It's important. Okay. Brace yourselves, people. <laughs> the supreme, the absolute and uncontrollable authority remains with the people. Not the elites, not the bourgeoisie. No, 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 no. Not the politicians, not the shiny suits, not the public servants, mm. not the governor general, the people. Now, it says here, I mentioned also that this particular recognition of this truth was reserved for the honour of this country. No other country has that power. Australia does. You do. Everybody on this call, you have the supreme, absolute, and uncontrollable authority. Now, but so, but we don't anymore. But if we were using that initial constitution that we no longer are taught in school, what was implemented long ago, the Australia of old would still be the Australia of now, in Gough, terms of the of the people. Yeah, Gough yep. Whitlam. Gough Whitlam. Gough Whitlam took this book out of law in Australia unlawfully. Now, that's a whole other conversation, right? But just understand they have something that looks the same. It's in a green cover, not a red cover. It sounds mostly the same, but a lot of the words mean different things. And so the government that you think you're electing is not a constitutional government. <clears throat> and for let me explain how that works when so how is it that you've you've managed to uncover this and and i mean obviously I, i'm i'm sure politicians and and lawyers and people who work up in government are are aware of this but how is it that like we don't know this is guys this is this is crazy this is crazy <laughs> that like we this, this no honestly that is insane i don't think people people watching at home if you are realize the the gravity of that that we are not being governed by the uh implemented system of con the, the implemented con con constitution we are being governed by something else that's been replaced because of whitlam correct yeah, correct that's now, insane yeah, that is not yeah. normal that is wrong that seems illegal for our country to do that to us 
Well, it is. And they're, it was playing, done they're playing with our lives and our livelihoods for whatever their grand design is. Well, their grand design is is um, a little um, a little far out there for tonight's conversation. Okay, um, well, don't, well, then let's not get into that. <laughs> Let, let's let's try and that, stick right? to subject. But the the other the other thing here is that um, in if we if we look at the constitution as it was a deed that was a, an act that was put together. So is that the people of the Commonwealth? Now we'll listen. We'll, let's have a look at some of the words in the actual act, right? Mm -hmm. Now, what this book does, I'll, I'll hopefully you might be able to see this, but there's things in there. The the, the act starts off with whereas the proper function, right? Now hang yeah. on, it says whereas, and there's a page, a bit over a page giving a description of the word whereas, and then whereas the people, and we've got two pages describing what the power is, what who the people are, how that term came about. Now listen to this bit. Whereas the people humbly re relying on the blessing of Almighty God, right? Humbly relying on the blessing of Almighty God. That's not Allah, different God, right? How do you, you know, know it's not the God of the Mormons? <laughs> <laughs> you know, humbly relying on the blessings of Almighty God. When you break the word down, Almighty, and you get the definitions of Almighty, all powerful, all strong, powerful, great, it's huge, right? Yeah, it's it's now, it's it's we, hard to conceptualize. And there's three pages on that. We've agreed to unite in one indissoluble federal commonwealth. Now, the word indissoluble is really important because I don't care who gets in, Liberal, Labor, they're all the same. They mm. will have another run at becoming a republic. No, thank you. No, thank you. Right? I do yeah. not want to be a republic. I, I, I'm adamantly against that. People have asked me that before and they're like, what? You don't think we should be able to govern ourselves? I'm like, we do govern ourselves, but I don't we want do. to separate from that. That Getting rid of that gets rid of more heritage that, that we have, gets rid of God in yeah, some sort of way. Yeah, but it's not just the heritage, dear. No, what no, no you, please elaborate. What it does is they'll tell you that we become self-governed. We are already a self-governed nation. What they'll tell you is that we'll no longer be controlled by the Queen, right? Mm. Uh, they have already taken the Queen out of our Commonwealth. Now, what they but the in the Constitution it states in the preamble that there the there is no crown per se, but the people are the quasi crown. You and I are the authority. You and I are the crown. Everybody on your call is the crown. Yeah. And they want to take away your authority, your power. And then the next question you've got to ask yourself, you've got to, you've got to ask yourself a lot, but <laughs> who would you trust in politics today? Which law firm, which public servants would you entrust to write the document that would forge this nation forward for the next two, three hundred years? Yeah. Um, there's nobody I can think of that I could trust this document to be rewritten by. And would Sharia law be a part of it these days? Ooh. Well, that's not exactly that, but that's that's the issue we have with multiculturalism. That's right. And and and, so, and and the 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 British Australian people or the white Europeans are so like, oh, we have to be kind and accepting because we used to be bad. So because we used to be bad, let's accept all these um ide all these um horrible ideologies and, and and just be embracing of them that is it's not the way and that's that's where we're headed and that's where we're, we're already there well dear there's a couple of things going on here okay one is most people today who follow the um ideology of um multiculturalism whatever um they do not have a constant in their life right now for you and i and hopefully a lot of your viewers we have a constant it's called the holy bible uh yeah i mean i would agree with you but right. many many of uh the followers are 
they they they, they don't have to agree with that. But let me no. put it anyway. Most people go. Oh, a lot of conservatives are atheist. Is, is yeah, basically what I was fine, trying to say. Right? Yeah. Um, if you do not have some point of reference, some constant that you then can it's chaos. Things, then it's just open slather. Everything goes no right, no wrong, and pretty soon the that's the left. That is you. You are in all sorts of deep doo doo. You really are. It's absolutely it's agree. Right? People always say, and the atheists and many people say. I don't need a book to tell me what's right and what's wrong. I, I figure it out on my own. Like they're somehow above everyone who doesn't require doctrine. But the thing is, having a book gives everyone a common denominator. It makes everyone almost um, puts everyone on the same playing field. Whereas if you put your, if you if you go by the atheistic uh, model, then every single th then the, what is right and what is wrong is irrelevant because. For someone having sex with more than one woman while you're in a relationship is perfectly fine, but it's not okay for someone else. Well, then, where's your standard? It's stupid. It makes right. no sense. You need yeah. we need that common denominator, and for us, it's the Bible, and yeah. I'm glad it is. Yeah, that's right. And look, if there's not a, a universal set of rules, then everybody's right and everybody's wrong, and everybody goes home offended. Uh, <laughs> it just doesn't work, right? Um, and so, you know, I've got. I've got a lot of material here and it's I don't want to bang on about this uh, because I, I've got some other stuff I want to talk about. But when I when I look around today, we as children now, I, I've had a lot on my Facebook feeds and all that sort of stuff. I've had people go, oh, look, another boring old fart white fella, you know, like, uh, <laughs> you know, well, I'm sorry. The only way I was able to get experience, knowledge and wisdom was to live through it. And it takes years in a lot of cases. And for me, it probably took a few extra years because I had to learn a few lessons two or three times. I'm learning a few lessons right now in stupidity, yep. But here's the thing. When you get crushed, knocked down and flattened, mm -hmm. there's two things that can come from that. You can stay there and that's the end of you or you can learn from it and come back up again. It's like going to the gym and working working out your muscles and you tear the fabric of the muscles and you grow bigger muscles, you'll grow stronger in your character. I've learned through the Constitution and the Bible, I've got two foundational books, the Bible and the Constitution. Yeah. I, I can walk into a courtroom and there's not much I can't win, right? Now, as I said, I'm not a lawyer. However, the Australian people don't realise that their Constitution is a trust document it's a document of trust now this is one of the reasons why i want to bring this back to the parliament right now as a trust document again most people don't understand much about trust law but in the old days when they they go to the crusades or the battles they'd take their chattels and silver and everything to their neighbor and they'd be held in trust and if the neighbor didn't look after it properly or lost it or sold it uh, he would be in all sorts of bother because he broke the trust. Now, trust law is still one of the strongest laws in Western society. I've never thought of it like that. Yeah. Now, uh, the establishment, blah, 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 blah. where am I? Wrong page. Oh, no, I'll just touch on this one for a second. No, I won't. That's, that's just going to cause more furor and everything else. <laughs> Um, <laughs> anyway, um, sorry, guys, I, I should have had. I, uh, can't find it. Sorry, my mistake. That's all right. Do you want to keep the, looking? The, the, the Constitution is state, it's a stated trust that the government would provide peace order and good government for the people yeah right now i don't think we've got a lot of peace in australia like we used to have we don't we i'm sure we don't have good governance because they've sold everything to the chinese and everybody else who wants to buy it correct <laughs> you know we're going broke at 100 mile an hour we're 380 billion dollars in debt so they have actually broken the trust 
and we need to take this book back into the parliament mm. for them to be held accountable. Okay? So now one other thing I do want to touch on, and I don't know, this is this this is gonna arc up, I tell you. I don't know what the people are putting in their messages at the moment. I got no idea. Uh Nothing, nothing negative. Most okay. people, a lot of people like you. One guy wrote, "I like this guy." All um, right, well, let's see if we can change that, will we? <laughs> <laughs> hey, oh. I want them to love you. You're fantastic. You're hey my guys, friend. look, let me explain something to you. To to alter anything in our government, in our constitution, there must be a referendum. And what a referendum is, a lot of people are too young to remember the referendums. The majority of people in the majority of states have to agree with what the government wants to change. Right. Now, we, if they want to bring out a plebiscite to see whether you want to become a republic, they cannot do that. That is treasonous, and whoever brings that to the fore should be shot, period, end of story. That it has to be a referendum. Now, there was a referendum held on the 3rd of, uh, 3rd of September 1988, long before some of you guys were born, right? to recognise local governments as an, a, a third tier of parliament. It was knocked back. Only 33.6% of the people voted in favour of it. 33.6% of the people voted in favour of what again? Sorry. Of, just... the, of local government, of councils, yeah. becoming recognised as a third tier of government within the constitution. Understood. Okay, as a third tier of government because we have two. Gotcha. We have two. Yeah. Local government now act as a third tier of government. And Even though it wasn't voted two. for as a majority. And our now recently departed... Prime Minister Bob Hawke, mm. in direct violation to the referendum of the people, enacted the Local Government Act a year Intriguing. later. Right? That's, then, yeah, that's dodgy. That's dodgy. But they did it because it was the only way they could raise, as it is now, $12 billion a year in rates. Anyway, so let me touch on something else here. Global warming. The governments are pushing for global warming. Uh, Bill Shorten's talking about having all these electric cars. They're wiping out our coal-fired power stations. Mm. And here's something. I, now, this is it's hilarious, but it's scary. Um, uh oh. 20, <laughs> 20, <laughs> 20 years ago, mm. I had the good fortune to go to an international conference in mm. Asia um on international finance and trade right? international finance and trade okay and what the united one of the united nations guys that were there 20 years ago said that it is in the best interest of the global communities to have a common enemy that we can all fight and it will be called, guess what it's called? Marxism? Nope. Islam? No. Nope. Globalism? Nope. Uh, it's close. But everybody, oh. everybody's everybody got to be scared of this. It's got to be the enemy of everybody, man, woman, and child. Global warming. Oh, global warming. Sorry. <laughs> I was, I was sort of close, but I really wasn't. <laughs> okay. And yeah, that's that's okay. the agenda of everyone at the moment. Global warming, global warming, global, global warming, warming right? climate change, yeah. climate change, climate change. Mm. They told us this is what they were going to do 20 years ago, right? Mm. And they said we will decrease the herds Sorry. of cattle around the world because they want more people to eat soy because soy is genetically modified. That's a whole other question. Anyway, mm -hmm. um, and they showed us a picture of a cow with a hole in its side and a big bag of wind because of the bovine flatulence. Okay. That today is on the agenda here in Australia for the farmers to be taxed for the farts that the cows let off. So wait, the 
Are the cows in pain? No, the cows aren't in pain. Like what they're doing is when a cow farts, farts yes, right, that's methane gas, and they're saying that's greenhouse gas, so we've got to capture all that. It's not allowed into the atmosphere. And if the farmer doesn't have that doesn't look after it, they're going to be taxed for their I cows. I think Australians farts. should be taxed for the farts that my father does, not the cows. <laughs> my children say the same thing. Anyway, <laughs> here's, here's, the interesting, here's the interesting thing. The farmers own yeah. the cows, so you can tax the farmer, right? Mm. But here in Australia... Right, we have four, an estimated forty-five million kangaroos. Oh, that's a lot of kangaroos. I didn't know that. Yep. Now we that's have. That's why we 20, eat them. Yeah, we have twenty-five million head of cattle. Right, we've got nearly double the amount of kangaroos. Why don't they tax the farts of the kangaroo? Because, because nobody owns a kangaroo. And no one's done a study on that. Mm. <laughs> and camels. We've got 1.2 million camels in Australia. You see, Whoa, it's I didn't even know, even know that. Yeah, we've got the biggest wild camel population in the world. Oh. You see, it's, it's not about climate change, people. Look, 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 God said. It's false, isn't it? It's a false yeah, premise. It's, God says. And I look, if you guys aren't into the Bible, that's fine. But for, for those of us who oh, are please read the Bible. I want my I want my followers to find salvation in the Lord. Okay, have a listen to this. This is in Genesis, right? The foundation stone of the Bible, Genesis, creation, right? And in Genesis 8, 22, God says, as long as the earth endures, seed time and harvest, cold and heat, summer and winter. And day and night will never cease. Will never cease. Will never end. Will never stop. Will continue. Never stop. To it will go on and on and on and on and on. Now, temperatures over the last few millennia have gone up and down, up and down, and we are in a cooling period. That's why they changed their narrative from global warming to climate to change. Climate change, because well, it's going to change. It always changes. It's always changed. When I was a young boy growing up, I grew up over in Victoria. Uh, in a little town near Dalesford, right? And I can remember on Christmas Eve in December that it snowed. Okay. In summer. In summer. It snowed. Well, obviously that's not normal. <laughs> <laughs> but people weren't running around going, oh, my God, the sky's falling in, henny, penny, quick, we're all going to die. It's winter climate change. It's winter climate change. <laughs> And so it's a common fear that they can instill in every man, woman, and child and tax them accordingly. Look, my views are just my views. Everybody's entitled to their views. Everybody's entitled to have their say. Now, the thing I say about that is you can, you're more than welcome to disagree with anything or everything I've said so far tonight. But there's Not no to there's no need to be rude. There's no need to tell me I'm some sort of abracadabra, simsala bim, poophead or something. <laughs> you know, express your opinion intelligently, please, if, and, and let's have a open discussion without becoming virile and enemies about it all. Mm. I agree. I, I think, um, but the thing what you're saying about the taxing of, of cow farts, how do you know personally that during the time before and after Christ that they were not taxing cow farts? How can you well, be sure? Well, <laughs> I don't think I was there that day. Um, <laughs> they, I'm pretty sure they didn't have somebody walking around counting the farts of the cows. I'm, I'm only guessing. Um, I can't find it in scripture anywhere that they employed cow farters. Um, but, you know. It's, <laughs> it's quite possible that, you know, where people say that we are the most intelligent generation because we've invented computers and, and Wi-Fi. And, but honestly, there's a lot of cognitive dissonance as well. We may be mathematically smart, but we're very, very stupid. We are a stupid people if we think that cow farts 
um, somehow affects the, the the ozone layer or whatever the hell it is, if getting rid of straws somehow is going to make the world a better place, um, it, the list goes on and on and on and on and on of, of the amount of stupid, like teaching children about uh, gender studies, just uh, sexualizing children, telling right. children that for four or five who are girls that it's okay to, to want to present as the opposite sex, we are getting stupider and stupider. And in the times of Christ or the times that led up to Christ and after, we were much smarter. Well, you're one right. could argue. Dear, what I what I point out is this that again, I'm probably old fashioned and I am I am as know, well. Right. But when I was a young boy, anybody talking about that sort of stuff or showing those sort of pictures to children, they would have been abusers. At least beaten up, if not locked up. Mm. Um, and that is pornography. Yeah. That and that is abuse. Yeah. Right. And quite frankly, it's a very sick and perverted way to go through your life. And we are not a clever people. No. Right. Um, you know, I, you know, I'm a um, industrial design engineer. Um, That's pretty smart sounding to me. Well, <laughs> you'd think so. But see, I'm a, I, I can be clever in one area, mm. as dumb as all get out in the others. Mm. This is why I try and broaden where are you dumb well can, can you knit <laughs> are you dumb there <laughs> i can't knit <laughs> but, but like I'm, I'm very good at sewing i'm, I'm a good sewer my mum taught me to sew mm. cook and iron before i was 12 years old because she said one day i won't be here to do it for you so men can do both things they don't need oh, women yeah. to sew for them Oh yeah, we can do it all, but we um <laughs> we dodge it, you know, we duck out and we we play like we can't. But yeah. I, I tell you how you mentioned that we're not very smart. I mean, so to to a degree, yeah. yeah. But no, this is just very basic stuff. Mm. All right. When you go to school and you study English, mm. right, as a language, yeah. Any when you're writing something down, and if you write a side note on your page that's perpendicular to the page, mm. it's not considered part of the text, is it? No, it's a footnote or something. Yeah. yeah. Have a look at this. That's a fifty-dollar note, right? Yeah. Now, if you notice the five and the zero, they have different size fonts. Hmm. Once you mm -hmm. break the size of the font, the five and the zero no longer makes 50. It's five. Different font. Now, okay. look, at the word, look at the word Australia. It's perpendicular to the page. Everything else is horizontal. Mm -hmm. It's not on the page. What does that tell you? That this isn't Australia? Well, this note's not anything. This is just fluff. But I don't, I don't understand what you're driving at with, okay. with that point. Well, yeah, let, yeah. let me explain. If we were clever people, we would have worked out, somebody would have worked out that the 50 being two different fonts does not make the number 50. Gotcha. Australia being perpendicular to the page, not horizontal to the page, has taken it off the page. So it's no real, it's not really legally on the page. Oh, I see. Okay, gotcha. So, so this note. But that's still a $50 note. Only for those who believe it to be worth $50. But at law, it really isn't because it just isn't, right? And and the new notes, somebody, I'm not sure whether this number is correct or not, but I believe the new notes cost 0.4 of a cent to print each. So whether it's a $100 note or a $50 note or a five dollar note it's worth 0.4 of a cent so wow. we're, we're not that clever you know we're <laughs> we've we've let so many things slip we don't pay attention to the details people pay attention to the details in everything that you do you know yeah they'd be paying attention to me you know and your details aren't with your face in the phone mm. The details are found, unfortunately for you, the details are still in the library, they're still in the books, and you have to spend the time and go find them. You know, dear, we spoke earlier and we talked about 
the various issues going on and, and stuff like that. And it's very easy for people to hide behind their phone or hide behind a computer. What we need, I, from my perspective, we need real people sitting down, drinking coffee, having meaningful discussion, free speech discussion. We don't all have to agree with each other, but we mm -hmm. need meaningful mm -hmm. discussion to come back into our society, not he said, she said, hit them with a stick sort of thing. But yeah. we need meaningful discussion. We really do. We do. And the issue is that aside from uh, making stupid mistakes here and there or, or um, not, you know, making mistakes as, as I've done, um, we should be able to talk about the things we want to talk about and they shouldn't be, we shouldn't be punished for it all the time either. Look, how do you have a democratic system where ideas and ideals can be brought forward openly without free speech? How do exactly. you do that? You can't. You have to give oxygen to good ideas. You have to give oxygen to bad ideas. That's exactly right. And at the end of the day, the it's not like my wife is the daughter of migrants, right? And people can't call me a racist because her her father, and I've sat and listened to him when he was alive, um, He they were Dutch, and they grew up in, in Holland whilst Nazi occupation was on and the things that the Nazis actually did to various people that he knew and how he escaped and all this sort of stuff. Um, you know, we're not racist people, but... We have to listen to people from all agendas. Now, as I said before, the, the, the Constitution, it is based off the Judeo-Christian Bible, the Bible of the King James Bible. That's our law structure. Now, we as a nation do not have to fold up and give everything we've got to those who just simply put their hand up and ask for it. Okay. Right? What we need to do is say, okay, tell us why you want us to do this and let's see if it's got some rationale. If it does, great. If it doesn't, I'm sorry, no, we're not doing that. End of story. Now, I don't care whether you're black, white, green, brown, brindle. I've got friends. of La Latina? <laughs> Latina. You know, look, I've got Aboriginal friends. I've got Chinese friends. I've got Vietnamese friends. I've got Spanish friends. Um, I've got... Indian friends, I've got... Uh, we Spanish are an awesome bunch. Yeah, yeah. And I've got... Um, um, African he friends. From? He's from um, Argentina. Um, you know, I've got people, friends from all, all walks of life. I'm not a racist person. But I have but a you, you are seen as racist. Sorry, I'll let you finish your thought. You are seen as racist and I am seen as racist because we say let's put a halt on immigration. It sounds oh. racist. Because we say we're not for multiculturalism, it sounds racist because that's just how people's mind default these days. Sure. Now, yeah, but continue. question. For those of you who do or do not know, let me say this. Islam, let's get straight to the point, Islam is we've got to take it back a fair bit in history and we've got to go back before Christ was born, mm. right, to Ishmael and Isaac. Oh, yes, the two. The, well, they're cousins. Jews well, and, and, and Arabs are cousins because those two were brothers. That's right. And yes. out, of, out of the, Jew, out of the Jew, Jewish system came Christ, who was a Jew, who then started... The Christian movement, right? So what we have got here is a family feud that's been going on for 3,000 years. And if you think the Australian government's going to fix that feud, you're wrong. If oh, you, of course. Right? Now, if you think for one minute that you can get oil and water to mix perfectly and be harmonious with each other, uh, you need to have a quick look at physics. It doesn't work. And for most of the people of the Muslim faith, now they're not a race. They're from, no, they're all, they're from all walks of life. They're, they are not a race. They're a complete ideology. They're a, they're a religion. They're a government. They're a banking. They're a... Um, Political system. And they come in the Sudanese colouring and they come in the Saudi Arabian colouring and then they come... Bosnians are European. They come in all colours. That's right. So we are not talking about a race, but we're talking about a complete 
system, if you like, and that system is at odds with the Judeo-Christian values and always will be. It will never mix. And so what we need to understand is that for them to get to this country, they have to come through several other Muslim Sharia countries. Why come here? That's the question. Why because they here? want to escape. They realize how shit their country is, so yeah, they but, come here because we we offer something beautiful and they want course. to be a part of it. But they, some of them want to be a part of it, but some of them want to be a part of it to ruin it. That's right. You know, reminds me of a story, dear. There was a, a scorpion on the side of the river mm. and he, he went up to the frog and he said, frog, you can swim, but I can't. Can you take me to the other side of the river? And the frog said, no. He said, but why not? He said, because you're a scorpion. You'll kill me, right? And the scorpion said, no, 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 truly, truly, I won't. I promise. Just get me to the other side of the river, please, I promise. And so the frog said, all right, jump on my back. So the scorpion jumped on his back and the frog swam across the river. Just as the frog reached dry land, the scorpion went whack and drove his stinger into him. And the frog looked at him and he said, why did you do that? I did. I trusted you. You said you wouldn't hurt me. Yeah. It's because I'm a scorpion. It's what I do. Exactly. And that's the lesson I should have learned on Sunday. Sorry, just to go off slightly off topic, but yeah. No, but look, I'm a, I'm a big believer in old-fashioned common sense. I don't think... If you haven't got a, a something that's a constant in your life to gauge where you're traveling to or how far you've come from, uh, you probably need to get that. Whatever it is for you, you need to get that. Um, and for me, I just, my run into politics is not because I want to be a career politician. I want to bring this country back under the constitution. I want Australia to have a set of rules and a set of laws that it originally had, and, and that are consistent. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. just hate the injustice. So that's what we're up about. Well, that's that's the end of our constitution portion. But we haven't gotten into how you came to faith in Christ. For anyone wondering if I'm a Christian, people are asking in the chat what my faith is, which I find strange because there's like a Bible behind me. Yeah, somewhere there, yep. All the Christian books right. are behind me. How did you become a Christian? Because um, everyone has a story except for me. I don't have a good story. Like I didn't live my life as an atheist and all of a sudden one day, Jesus, ah. And like I've always been a Christian and then I walked away from my not my faith, but I walked away from going to church for a long time and I just had fun with friends and lived my life and had a good life. But then I decided one day that um, that that I needed something and that something was missing. So I, I went back to going to church and it just balances me more. But that's not really an interesting story. What What is your actual story? Let everyone know. I think testim I love testimonies. Uh, um, I love testimonies. So tell me, how did you come to faith in Christ? Well, before we get there, let's give you a little bit of a lead up to that. Okay. Um, as a young man, um, my mother would say to me, son, go out and have a good time and behave yourself. And I'd say, woman, make up your mind. It's one or the other. Um, <laughs> woman. <laughs> anyway, um, I, was the, I was the sort of young guy who the cars could never go fast enough. There was never enough beer or whiskey. Um, my job was to try and out drink the production of the brewery. Um, and I, um, as a young man at the age of, I think I was 16, uh, the doctor told me, he said, son, you might as well just keep drinking. He said, why? He said, because at this rate, you'll be dead in six months. Oh. Um, right. So that was a bit of a wake up call. Definitely. And so I stopped drinking at the age of 16 until I turned 21. And, um, then, um, you know, settled down, I got married, we had kids, and I made a decision that I would never let any of my children ever, ever, ever see me drunk, ever. That's and a good they decision. Have. They never have, neither of my grandchildren. Um, then one one day through a, um, through a business group I was involved with, uh, I was introduced to a bloke called Bob Payne. Now, Bob Payne's actually running for the Senate this year in Victoria. Oh, okay. 
in Fred Nile's uh, party. Now, Bob's 86 years old now, and Bob was a Baptist minister. And Bob wanted to do a, uh, he was doing a seminar on Christian orientation in the business world. And I thought, oh, well, my mate invited me along, I'd go along. Now, I grew up as a Catholic. My auntie was a reverend mother in the church. Um, my, you know, my dad was an older boy, but then he became the boy that altered. But anyway, uh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, so you know, I had the, the 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 foundational biblical upbringing, right? And um, even though I knew right from wrong, I didn't take a lot of notice of it. But, um, <laughs> but <laughs> anyway, Bob was. Um, Bob spent all weekend, and, and in actual fact, it was Bob who enlightened me to the value of the Constitution and how the Bible and the Constitution are interwoven. Mm. And uh, anyway, so I had a long uh, business relationship with Bob, and he was doing a big uh, function in Melbourne and went on the Saturday, and he said, look, for, for those of you who, um, who are here from interstate, he said, uh, I'll be doing a non-denominational Christian service uh, in the morning, uh, Sunday morning, if you want to come along. And when it all finished, Bob came up to him. He said, mate, he said, would you mind coming tomorrow morning and um, just helping us out and making sure everybody's got a chair? And I, I, yeah, okay, I can do that. And Bob was no fool. He he tricked me. Um, I, was, I was there on Sunday morning. <laughs> uh, Bob preached up a storm and, uh, boy, did it really get to me. And I just yeah. realised how far away I'd walked from the walk I should have been on. And uh, he said, for those of you who um, feel the tug on your heart, now's the time to come forward and give your life back to Christ. Yeah. I, I didn't even realise, but I looked up and there I was down the front on my knees. You didn't even, like, you just, something just, compelled you. Yeah, just down there. And, um, yeah, that was, crikey, that was... Got to be close to 27, 28 years that I did that. And did you feel something like, did you feel like something electric take over you? What I felt was a peace, an absolute release and a peace. I felt a weight that would just roll off me that, uh, you know, you don't realise it, but little bit by little bit by little bit by little bit by little bit, the world pushes you down. Well, on that day, the world just fell away and I just felt such a peace. I felt, you know, it was a joy that, you know, I, the English language does not have the words to describe. And have you felt that same peace consistently for the last 40 years or often? No, um, not really. I, I know that no matter what goes on, that... I've got this saying called G-I-I-C, God is in control. Now, mm. that doesn't mean that some days I don't try and take back control <laughs> and yeah. do it my way. But whenever, and I'll, it's really interesting because I don't know why it is, but I have a lot of people who for some reason come to me, um, strangers, people I haven't met, maybe met once or twice. Me? <laughs> <laughs> they just open up to me and I'm able to help them, guide them, do whatever. And I and I sit there and I just smile and I go, Yeah, okay, God, you've got it. I am just look, I am just, you know, I'm I'm not <laughs> I've got to clarify this. I am not <laughs> a tool, I am his tool, right? And I'm just there to to help people along their way. I can only plant a seed. I, I can't force them to grow. I only encourage them. And if if the Christian walk is not for them at this time, that doesn't mean they're not my friend. That doesn't mean that I can't hang out with them and be with them. I've got a lot of friends who aren't Christians. Oh, um, of course. All my friends aren't Christian. Yeah. I have very few Christian friends. Yeah. I'd say three. Yep. And, yeah. you know, so, but I, I do know that no matter what goes on, that I'm 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 right there in the palm of his hands. And I know that. Right? And that's that's such an a surety, you know, that's it's you know, my brother, 
um, just a quick thing. My brother and I were in a really bad car crash many, many years ago. Oh. Uh, he was, um, his theory was only the only people that believe in the Bible are the weak and the gutless who need a crutch to hang off. But here's the interesting thing. Mm. This was a combined impact of the two cars head on collision was 240 kilometres an hour head on headlight to headlight. Sweet Jesus. Uh, and um, it, it was a bit of a mess. They had to cut the thing up pretty bad to get us out of it. But he actually momentarily died in that car crash. Oh, wow. Before he died, he said, Tim, he said, do you remember the prayers that mums taught us when we were kids? He said, I said, yeah. He said, I am dying. He said, I need you to pray for me. Mm. Right now, and I did. I prayed for him, right? Okay. And I felt the life just drop out of him. And when they were cutting the car up to get me out, the car lurched and he groaned. Oh, my God. And I said, he's alive. You get him out. You get him out. And they got him out and saved him. And he lived nearly 30-odd years more. Oh, wow. So you almost made me cry. <laughs> but, you know, on that day, now my brother was a wealthy man, but on that day, he didn't want to talk to his accountant. He didn't want to talk to his lawyers. He didn't want to talk to his banker. He yeah. didn't want to talk to all he wanted to do was talk to Jesus. That's so beautiful. That's all he wanted to do on that day at that time. Yeah. And, you know, I think all of us somewhere along the way will come to that point, whether it's today, tomorrow, or whenever, we'll all get to a point where we just want to talk to the boss. Yeah. Well, that that's a really – see, that story is almost the opposite of one that I heard. So that's a really nice um, – story i mean it's it's sad because you felt your brother's life leaving his body and i'm sure that scars you to this day that's horrible but he obviously overcame that oh my i look teary people are <laughs> gonna think i'm such a weak idiot um someone told me a woman that i recently made friends with at my church um she's older than me but uh, I'm, I'm noticing lately that most of my friends are varying in age ever since i stepped into this um Alt media space. All my friends are different ages now, and I love it. It's the best thing that's ever happened to me, um, having friends of all different ages who are all Christian. In my real life, outside of this space, I don't have Christian friends. But um, this one lady, she's like 49 or 50, and she was telling me a story about her sister's husband. Her sister's husband recently died, and um, they are not Christians. And I said to her one time, oh, it doesn't matter that they're not Christian. We never know what happens at the last second. It's very, very possible that the last second they call out to Christ and they end up in heaven. And she goes, no, he didn't end up in heaven. I said, well, how would you know that? And this is what she said. And it's freaked me out ever since. I find this to be a, a story that scarred me and it, I didn't even know the guy. Seconds before he died, now, the sister of my friend is also an atheist, doesn't believe in the Bible, doesn't believe in Jesus Christ. She said she looked at her husband's face seconds before he died and he went like this. He was afraid, he was scared, and then he was out. But other people, Christians who have died, have said that, that the people who have died have smiled, that there was no look of terror. Yeah. How freaky is that? I find yeah. that insane. That yeah. has freaked me out ever since. And so I, 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 I really hope that when I die, I'm smiling and that I'm happy because I'm in God's arms. Let me, let's all just finish up. Can I just finish up with one more little story? Oh, please do, please do. I just, I just thought that story really yeah. um, balanced well, your story. It's very poignant because that story just balanced yours. That's all. Yep. Before I was born, my yeah. eldest sister died. Oh, I'm sorry. No, that's all right. That's okay. And she died at home from an enlarged heart. Mum knew she was going to die mm. and there was nothing they could do about it. And she was eight years of age. And mum got up one morning and went into her room. And there was my sister sitting up in her little bed. Yeah. And she said, oh, mummy, I'm glad you're here. Now, my mother told me this story many times, right? Okay. And I've, no, I've got no reason to doubt her one bit, right? Of course not. And she said, oh, Mummy, I'm glad you're here. She said, oh, why, sweetie? She said, Mummy, these lovely ladies have asked me to go with them. 
and I told them I can't go yet because I have to ask you. Oh, angels? Yeah. And wow, ladies. Said, well, what what are the what are the ladies wearing? Oh, mummy, she said they got beautiful silk gowns and beautiful wings made of something so shiny. Oh. And she said, "Is it okay if I go with them?" Yeah. Right. And my mum walked over to my sister, laid her down on the bed, and cuddled with her. And she just died. And, and, and she said she died with the most beautiful, peaceful smile on her face. Yeah. She imagine. And so, little children who have not read the gospel, but have parents who have prayed for them and loved them and they know of God but don't know God and to the people who refuse to know God, they have a different experience in death. You That's know, incredible. And how old was your sister? Eight. Oh, eight. Yep. And so, look, we we live an interesting, complicated life. Life will always be complicated. There will always be ups and downs. Those that will believe and those who won't, those who think climate change is the real deal and others who <laughs> I like how we're, we're bringing it back to that. Right. <laughs> back to and topic. So, you know, but you've got to have two places. You've got to have at least one place to go that's a constant. And whatever it is for you, make sure it's a real, real constant. Well, it should Something, be the Bible. <laughs> should, well, in our opinion, it should be the Bible. Yes. And, um, you know, the other side of that is that um, you can go to all the prophets' graves and find out where they buried them. You can go to where they buried Christ, but he ain't there anymore. He's gone. Yeah, he, he, asc he ascended. Yeah, he arose from the dead. The others didn't. All right, dear, I think our time is just about up. What do you reckon? I reckon I'll stop the broadcast now. I thank you so much for coming on. I think this has been an incredibly in-depth uh discussion and none I, I hope people got stuff out of it we had over 30 people watching consistently that's pretty good because sometimes it drops in and out yep. uh, um so we did well and i hope everyone really liked the content please uh if you feel like if you live in south australia and you like this man <laughs> <laughs> you think tim dwyer um stands for for the truth and, and stands for the best interests of australia um i highly recommend you vote for uh, Fraser Anning's Conservative parties in, in South Australia. And guys, uh, tune in next uh, Wednesday at the regular time at 8.15 every Wednesday. I have Christopher Shortus on my show and we will be discussing um, nationalism, Australia and the Constitution as well. <laughs> so, good yeah. subjects. Excellent. All right, um, I'll just get off the broadcast. Uh, uh,